Today's episode of the Four Seasons of Film podcast is brought to you by Phil's Coffee. Phil's specializes in handcrafted coffee made one cup at a time. Visit a location today or find them on the web at philscoffee.com. That's Phil's with a Z, coffee.com. Find the beans you're looking for. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Four Seasons of Film podcast. It's Andy here. I'm on special assignment this week. I'm going to be doing the movie Dead Don't Die. I'm doing it all by my lonesome. Uh, the full gang will return next week. But, you know, the, this is the summer season. So, you know, a lot of times we, I, you know, I have to do the crap night movies and the movies that win the the weekend. But this weekend I had a pleasant surprise by, uh, by going out and seeing Jim Jarmusch's The Dead Don't Die. And um, I'm seeing previews for this movie. I was really stoked that we picked it uh, to do this week. And, um, you know... Nate and Scotty give me a bunch of shit because, you know, I know who Jim Jarmusch is. I've seen uh, a few of his films and we've also done uh, Only Lovers Left Alive uh, a few seasons ago on the podcast. But, you know, I know who he is, the, the director. I've seen Broken Flowers and uh, pretty much that's it. <laughs> and Only Lovers Left Alive. So I was kind of excited to see this. You know, it's being a horror movie, a uh, also a zombie movie. But with uh, Jim Jarmusch touch, I was, I was in from the get go. Uh, so it's for the people who don't know, The Dead Don't Die, um, the bio um, on IMDb states that the peaceful town of Centerville finds itself battling a zombie horde as the dead start rising from their graves. The film stars uh, Bill Murray and Adam Driver, who are cops of the town of Centerville, and also Chloe Sevenji. Uh, from kids fame is uh, is one of their uh, partners as well and so Adam Driver and Bill Murray are going around the town they start to notice these weird things happening um, and it turns out you know it with the star-studded cast uh, you have also Danny Glover you have Tom Waits uh, Steve Buscemi um, and, a, and a few other people like Iggy Pop and uh, Carol Kane that make cameos in the movie as well, and the story unfolds of why the town of Centerville has suddenly become infested with zombies. And so this movie, I mean, uh, coming out just fresh, just got out of the theater and coming down to do podcasts like uh, like I always do. But coming out of the movie, I, I left with uh, with a great feeling because I, this movie, uh, it, it w I had a great time watching it. Um, in my crowd, I feel like this movie might have missed uh, missed the audience, in my crowd at, at least, because it was a really funny movie. A lot of tongue-in-cheek jokes that, you know, if you're not really paying attention to, there's, you know, the easy ones, but there's also the fast ones in there um, that, you know, I think maybe went over a little bit of people's heads. Um, you know, maybe you watch it a second time. But, you know, I, f I feel like with Jim Jarmusch's direction in this movie, he, he steered it in, in a great way because... You know, he play, he paid homage to a lot of the classic uh, uh, zombie and horror films with different references and different little Easter eggs without it. But the main the main thing about it is it's it's it, it was his own take on the zombie movie. And I remember watching like Shaun of the Dead, Edgar Wright Shaun of the Dead, and I absolutely love that movie because yes, it's a zombie movie, but it kind of flipped it on sass, right? It's it was a, more of a British comedy, kind of the same line of this, a lot of tongue in cheek jokes and. You know, this family's trying to survive in Shaun of the Dead. And this one, you know, you have the two cops and all these other town people trying to survive as, you know, this this zombie outbreak is is occurring for for whatever reason. And 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 I think that, you know, it's it's a it's a very slow dialogue movie, not in the in the pacing or the movie feels like it drags. It just, you know, everyone I feel it was so matter of factly about the whole situation in there, which was a nice touch because, you know, some people were freaking out that there were zombies, but, you know, other people were trying to wrap their heads around it. And, you know, um, Adam Driver and Bill Murray were, were great uh, heading up this movie, especially Adam Driver, his character uh, of Ronnie, Officer Ron Peterson, you know, he was the one that was the most calm and saying the whole time, he's like, I have a bad feeling about all of this. And, you know, just the subtleties of him just marching on through and trying to figure out what's going on in this town. And I keep coming back to that Shaun of the Dead reference. And I think this is really Jim Jarmusch's version of a zombie film, right? And I think it, 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 it'll stand the test of time. And it's, you know, it still gives all those classic horror elements uh, with the with the zombies, 
um, and the different devices within the movie. But, you know, it, it does a great job of building up and building up and building up. And you're seeing these little things happen around the town. These little things starting to go, oh, hey, crazy. And, you know, and then finally you get to sort of the climax of the film where, you know, more and more of these zombies are starting to appear. And then what are the townspeople really going to do here? And, you know, it, it was a delightful it was a delightful ride. I, I had a great time watching it. Um, you know, it's it's one of those that, like I as as soon as I got out of the theater, I um, I wanted to go see it again. Um, but, you know, I, I have a feeling that, you know, some people in these audiences, like in my audience, they were uh, kind of left in in wondering at, at, in the end because they can't go through this all journey. And, you know, it has a great it has a great message in this movie and he and he puts it in throughout and uh and you know the ending once you see the film you'll you'll know what i'm talking about i'm not gonna do any spoilers on this podcast but you know i I felt like it was a great ending for me but for a lot of people it it left a lot of questions and the answers were in there um and then there's uh you know some satire in there about it you know there some of the characters are aware of the of the world they're living in and you know it's crazy what's going on like i said i don't want to spoil anything or give too much away but you know and then also there's the plenty of cam- other cameos like Danny Glover and Steve Buscemi play some of the town folk and and uh also Selena Gomez is in there for a little bit so you got you just got a bunch of different uh, star power coming here i guess you know when somebody when, when they need zombies everybody wants to be one and Tom Waits he plays the hermit in the woods this kind of who is he's you know he's reclusive and stays in the woods and you know kind of watches over the town and he's watching this all unfold kind of as semi the narrator semi part of the story and i thought it, it was a it was a funny part to see him i was like holy shit that's tom waits and then the, you know the credits started to go and he also had the rizza in there um which uh, you know i haven't seen the movie coffee and cigarettes but i know he was uh that was one of his earlier roles when he uh was was starting to act and you know it, it's just overall it's a it's a great all around movie. It's a solid zombie movie. You just have to go into the fact that it's going to be it's a Jim Jarmusch movie, so it's going to be different than what you think is going to be a traditional uh, zombie movie. But it's very, but it's very entertaining. It's the uh, it's it has the right combination of laughter and darkness uh, at the same time. And Tilda Swinton. Uh, I forgot to mention her um, plays uh, one of the town folk that uh, she's the mortician or she runs the uh, the the funeral home and she goes out and, you know, from even from the trailers, you can see that she's just out to kick ass and take names. And, you know, she's always uh, this time she plays Scottish Tilda Swinton and some of the characters names, uh, uh, you know, are a play on their real life uh like uh, like like for Tilda Swinton, her name in the in the movie was Zelda Winston. You know, very 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 similar. And Rosie Perez was Posey Juarez. <laughs> so you know, you know, uh, Jim Jarmers has no uh, no qualms about uh, you know putting some of that tongue in cheek, uh, little 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 playful type jokes in there. There's a guy named Sturgill Simpson who did the uh, theme song, a country song called The Dead Don't Die, and it keeps playing on the radio and it keeps calling back. And, and it's a great song. It gets stuck in your head. So the, And then that's the song you first play in the movie, so it sets up a really good tone for it. He eventually makes an appearance as one of the zombies dragging a guitar uh, dragging the guitar down the town and you know there's plenty of you know cool references to you know night of the living dead with you know this takes place in a fictional town um and they never said if it was in ohio or in pennsylvania but there's reference to pittsburgh and cleveland and of course everyone knows george a romero's night of the dead and uh george a romero's a lot of his films are centered in pennsylvania either in outside of pittsburgh or these rural towns like dawn of the dead is somewhere in uh in center pennsylvania and so it, it was nice to see the homage to that and, and also see this fresh take. And, you know, it, it, you, but I would recommend I would recommend this movie to uh, everyone that, uh, that if, you know, if you like zombie movies, you know, it's like it even think of like movies like Zombieland and Zombieland 2 is coming out, which Bill Murray was is in all the movies I just named uh, the dead don't die Zombieland Zombieland 2. So there's kind of this resurgence of, you know, this comedy zombie type esque of uh of film, you know, and it's a nice direction because it, I think with the comedy aspects in it, it kind of draws more people towards the horror genre or gives them, uh, you know, some movies might have a little bit more of a chance to be watched because, you know, uh, a lot of people just, you know, horror isn't their bag and people who love horror love it. It's one of those things, either you hate it or you love it. Uh, very few people I've met are kind of like, yeah, I can watch this, but 
You know, it's it's a it's a polarizing type of genre. So, you know, it's nice to see these kind of movies that fit in the mold that is kind of, you know, could be shown to more of a broader audience, more of a general crowd, you know. Um, so I think, you know, Jim Jarmusch, man, I, I really enjoyed this movie and uh, I can't wait to see uh, what comes out next. And it's funny, too, because it's released in the summer and I feel like June now is the new like uh, Halloween in June because you have this movie coming out. You also have you had the. You had this movie come out. You also had Child's Play come out. Um, that movie Crawl with the alligator disaster films coming out. So it's 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 weird that you know it's weird to see the shift of these movies being released. Even you know like different Oscar movies or things like this. The the, the traditional uh, seasons that they would be released in are kind of just being blurred. And I don't know if this is because of all the the comic book movies. You know these used to be summer movies, but now they bled into the bled into the other months of the year so now studios are trying to figure out you know where they're really going to place the movies and when they're going to release them because if they're going to put them against a uh, comic book movie you know they're just going to get swept under the rug and these these movies might not get the fair share that they're looking for so it's it'll be interesting to see kind of you know the four seasons of film you know it is the summer season but i, I feel like the seasons it's like the san francisco bay area it's like one and a half seasons all year so uh, it'll be interesting to see, but you know that's uh, that's pretty much it for for what I had uh, about the the dead don't die. Uh, so you know, check us out fourseasonsfilm.com to stay up to date with all the latest content for the podcast, the TV show. Tweet Nathan at Nate R Blackburn. Tweet tweet the podcast at Four Seasons Pod on Twitter and tell us your thoughts and if you liked uh, the Dead Don't Die or any other movie you think we should be covering. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in and and we'll see you next week and keep film alive.